guys. So we're out here right now. We're gonna get the subframe basically all reinforced so I can put it back in the car and then put the engine back in. Um, I received my clutch, my overflow weld on bung for the, uh, for the coolant side because last year I had just one that was on the coolant lines and it was kind of ghetto rigged. This year I want to do it proper. Uh, and same thing as the subframe. Last year it was not reinforced and I didn't trust it. it. Didn't seem to bend, but then again I didn't ride the car enough. So this year hopefully it should be good. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and show you that. All right, so basically I, in order to get the clearance on here, so I'm get this to focus. So in order to get clearance on here, you have to basically chop away quite a bit of the subframe. And I'm going to be putting a piece of quarter inch two by two angle iron. It's not 100% fitted yet, but that's going in there like that. And that'll be welded in. Once it's in, I'll touch base again. And just to show my clutch setup, just a cheapo one sitting over there on the shelf. But it does have a lightweight single mass flywheel, which is a big deal. I don't know if we showed you guys, but Sean's girlfriend no longer drives this car. She now has that car, which he's changing the plate lights on. I got that 540i V8, and the S14's back running, and that other piece I showed at the end of the driveway is uh, Gab's PT Cruiser for the Demolition Derby. So, so anyways, I'll touch back once I get this uh, in. So, I got the subframe reinforcement, like the piece of angle iron sitting in here for now. Yes, down here I do need to do something else with this. I'll cut it and probably put a piece to fill it. It was kind of cut really haggard just to throw over the oil pan to make sure it cleared and I wasn't paying enough attention on how straight I was cutting it. So, you know, it wasn't exactly the brightest idea, but I'll fix it. So, anyways, <clears throat> this piece is in here. I'll pull it out in a second. This here is not what I'm actually going to use. It's just to, to show, like, you know, a piece of quarter inch steel. Basically, I'm going to cap off the ends on both sides with quarter inch steel like this. But, you know, obviously one piece, not not a tiny little piece like that. Let's see if I can show you a little better. So, basically, that's just going to go in there like that. But if it was a full piece. And it's going to be the same on the other side. But, the thing on the other side is, um, I kind of... Uh, ran, I'm, I'm, Sean's dad borrowed the uh, the grinder, so I'm running off a battery grinder right now. So I keep killing batteries, and I'm out of batteries right now. So I haven't had a chance to be able to get this cut thick enough to be able to put a piece of quarter inch in there. So for now, I'm going to cut. I'm going to tack that piece in there with using this as a spacer and uh, test it over the oil pan. Make sure we've got the clearance we need. I know I'm going to have to probably trim um, just a little bit off of the top here. And uh, other than that, I think we're gonna be okay. I'm hoping, so that's why I'm only gonna tack it in for now. And then uh, I'll touch base once I have it tacked in. This is what we're gonna end up with, which is pretty good. Clearance wise here, it's actually, you know, I got quite a bit of clearance. I'm not, I'm not, not too worried about that. So I got a trim under here though. Basically, let's just see. I had already notched it a little bit there, but I'm gonna have to trim off a little bit there. And about a quarter inch to half an inch off the whole thing, which I figured I was gonna have to do. And then once it's boxed in, we'll be good to go. So I can start welding a lot of that. So. I uh, painted up my mounts, cleaned the rev shift ones up again, took off my oil pan and took the main part of the dent out, <coughs> resealed it, and subframe's done. And painted, you know, all gold everything. So, It's all closed and boxed in. Doesn't look all that pretty, but 
it's all that's needed really there's a lot of spatter on there because i was welding with flux core but it's enjoyable you know lots of room for the oil pan it's fully boxed in there's absolutely no holes anywhere so i'm pretty happy with how it came out so i'm going to put it on and uh, show you guys all right so the way i made it that notch just goes over the oil pan these go in here So that's it, it's on. I'll tighten it up with a ratchet after the video. Now, let me show you what we've got here. Oops. So, lots of clearance there. And, I'm trying to show you on this side too. Don't think you'll be able to really see. <clears throat> Not as much clearance as on the bottom, but there's still pretty good clearance under there. And the sides. So I think we're pretty good. I think this year uh, won't have any subframe issues. That's pretty good. I'm happy about that. Alright guys, so I don't know if uh, you've been following the build or not, and I'm hoping you are. So I don't know if you've noticed that me and Sean have been wearing these FT86 shirts and we also have the intro for it in the video. Sean actually works there. This is a company in Canada that you will not beat their prices. This is, you know, they're absolutely amazing and it's where we order basically all of our parts. So if you see any new parts, uh, you know, Sean's been ordering all kinds of stuff. You got this nice uh, Aeroflow rad hose from them. He's got all kinds of parts that's where we get just about everything I got my new clutch from them uh, you know my weld on uh, weld on bung for coolant basically everything that we're buying is from them and we love to support local plus the fact that they're cheap it's the best price we get around if it's not on their site they'll find it for you so big shout out to FT86 and hope you guys keep uh, watching the videos like and subscribe and please keep watching Thank you.